Jason Silver, baby! Woo! That's right, it's the UK. KG and I are gearing up for a trek through the English countryside, hunting for history hidden just below our feet. We'll be searching for coinage issued by kings and other treasures forgotten by time. England's been around a while, and it's been involved in a few scuffles over the years. Just about everyone and their dog has tried to take over this place, or at least planned an attempt, including the Romans, the Vikings, France, Spain, Norway, and Germany, just to name a few. Caesar invaded in 55 BC, there was a Norman invasion in 1066, and Liverpool provided the roots of the British invasion of 1964. With a little help from our friends, KG and I are planning our own invasion of England right now. What's all this then? Well, we stormed into the country like always. Oh! Oh! Can you believe we're actually in England and we get to hunt here again? Unbelievable, the land of the queen. You know. Romans were here. We got old English tribes that were here before the Romans that the Romans took over and they had coins. So we, Medieval times yeah, yeah. and Iron Age. It's all nectar, it's all good, and we're gonna be hunting for it. It's time to meet up with our friend and fellow detectorist, Gary Smith. Not only has he written extensively about Roman history and contributed many finds to museums in England, he's an expert treasure hunter. He's found at least five major hordes of Roman and Bronze Age coins, so it's pretty obvious he knows how to locate ancient settlements and gathering sites. I think we've chosen the right guide for the week. Nice yeah. to see you again, buddy. Nice to have you back to England. Yeah, yeah, yeah we made England. it back. Yeah, you thought you were rid of us, but here we are again. <laughs> so what's going on now? What do you got planned for us? We've got an amazing little bit of area of land. We've got a real large, we've got about a thousand acres here. We could be finding anything over the next few days. We've got the Iron Age, we've got, we got Roman, we've got medieval. It's hard to even fathom the age, you know, being from the US and you know, you find a coin from the 1800s, you know, and it's, <laughs> it's super exciting, but you come over here and you can find coins from 2000 or even older. Of course, we can date and age them. So we can sort of think, okay, what's going on over there? Or we go into this field, if there's nothing there, then they obviously never used that in those times. But if we start finding some pottery and, and, and some Roman stuff or some medieval bits and pieces, yeah. we can uh, perhaps uh, tell a bit of a story about it. That's kind of your thing, isn't it? You're building all these little pictures and... We will basically track up a whole whole area of the land, hopefully over, over time, with these little finds coming up on all fields. We'll be able to tell a story of how, how the land was used in Roman times or medieval and stuff. If we can find the Roman coins, we might have a small chance of finding some Iron Age coins. KG, what are we waiting for? Let's go hunt. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I see silver, baby! Look at that! 1942 silver coin! I know it's not Roman era, but that's okay. Anytime you can pluck silver from Mother Earth, it's a good day. Oh, hey, hey, look at this. Super loud, awesome signal. Oh, look at that. 1952. It's a half penny, a British half penny. It's not Roman, but you know what? It's cool. <laughs> half penny in the pock. The flat button. But we'll actually find these in the US, you know, on Civil War sites and colonial sites and any place that the Europeans came over because all the flat buttons we get over there, almost all of them actually came from Europe. Thank you, Europe, for the making of the flat button. Uh, look at this. It's an old time bale seal. Over here in England, I mean, they were trading goods from one country to the next country. Can actually identify exactly where, you know, some goods came from by the writing on it. 
bell seal, baby. This sounds like one of them big fat Roman coins right here. Oh, it is a big fat coin. Ah, I could have a Roman coin, baby. KG and I are loving the English countryside and open fields. We're popping a few coins here and there and hoping to find some Roman silver and gold. When I look up, I see KG is definitely onto something good. This sounds like one of them big fat Roman coins right here. Oh, it is a big fat coin. Ah! Oh, it's, it's a giant fat one. Usually the Roman coins, you know, they're about twice or three times as thick as a normal coin. Ah! I thought I had a Roman coin. All I got is a big fat depressing lump of lead. You know there's got to be a Roman coin out here somewhere. I'm going to go sniff one out. Ah, not a coin. Looks like an old time metal button on some kid's trouser as he was out here helping his dad maybe tend the flock of sheep. Maybe he was you know, kind of a rambunctious little guy and he would run over and he'd jump on the sheep and he would hang on as tight as he could and see how long he could ride him across the field. Probably got thrown off, tore the button right off of his trousers. Check it out. Can you see it in the dirt? Hey, this is pretty cool. Found an old English clock key. I wonder if it went to some other kind of maybe machinery or something. It's a mystery that we've unlocked. Ah, oh, check out this awesome old buckle right there. It's probably an old time shoe buckle, so it had a curve to the shape of his, you know, his foot. This could be something really good. Definitely a fancy design. Got a little hinge on it. It's some kind of clasp or maybe a pin or a brooch. <laughs> Look at this thing. This is like one of those mysteries that just magically appear from Mother Earth. Some kind of a seashell. Look, there's a loop on the back of it. Ha, that's cool. A little bit ago, KG was over here and we were talking about one of my finds and he took the sensitivity button and pushed it all the way down to zero. <laughs> I just now discovered it. I will get even with him for that. <laughs> that just doesn't happen by accident. You can't just accidentally hit the button down that many clicks. Now it's banging. This is awesome. I'm lucky I found this. Definitely not a coin. I think it might be jewelry. No, no, look at this. There's a hinge. I don't know if you can see that tiny little hinge. And there's two sides to it, so it opens and closes this way. And look at all these little tiny holes in it. See the tiny holes? This is probably a coin purse. This could be from the 20s, like the flapper girls, where the chains hung down from the purses. Definitely not Roman, but it makes me very happy because it's beautiful, ornate. And as KG would say, it's a woman-related item. <laughs> Some kind of a pin. I'm thinking maybe it could be an old, you know, membership pin or something. There's a lion on it. I'm thinking this could have been like, who knows? Maybe they got a lion's club over here in England. And it could even be military-related. I'm out here looking for Roman and pre-Roman nectar. And I plucked myself out of the earth an awesome pin that could have been lost maybe a hundred or two hundred years ago. Very cool. Oh, it is roundness. Pretty cool. It's in good shape, whatever it is. Let's see if it's like some kind of ladies ornamental thing or whatever. Oh, this is gonna be good. This could be mill. I could have mill. It's got a big like fancy star with a bunch of like rays in the star shooting out and some kind of lion or a dog or some kind of animal and a bunch of Latin words on it. Cool old military button from the 1800s or early 1900s. The Latin phrase on it is taken from the English order of the garter and means shame be to him who evil thinks. 
I know it's not Roman, but to me, this is exciting stuff. Cool, awesome old military button. Oh, I could have myself a Roman coin, baby! Yeah! Katie and I are in merry old England, searching for artifacts from the time of Henry VIII back through the Middle Ages to the Roman occupation of England. I'm hoping to find that giant bejeweled golden pendant that Henry VIII wore in all those paintings. Henry VIII was King of England from 1509 to 1547 and is best known for all of his wives and mistresses. But here's something weird that I bet you didn't know. Apparently he was also an awesome tennis player and had a bunch of tennis courts built all over the place, including on the castle grounds. Maybe he was playing tennis around here somewhere and while he was showing off his superb backhand for the ladies, he got his necklace caught on the racket handle and tore the pendant right off. Oh, I from a shot. I from a shot. Yeah, that's very good. We're hunting along some rolling hills, and before long, KG runs into something really cool. Oh, I could have myself a rolling coin, baby! Yeah! This has some like weird little writing on it. It's square. It's not like round like a old Roman coin. You know, I don't know all that much about Roman coins. Maybe I have a square Roman coin, the rarest of the rare, the, maybe the rarest in the world coin. Pretty cool find. It's a coin weight from the 16 or 1700s. Back then, people would try to cheat by shaving off the edges of gold and silver coins. So wary traders started using the coin weights to test coins they took for goods to make sure the gold and silver weight was accurate. Oh, I got the edge of roundness here. And you know what, boys and girls? It is big roundness. This is what I live for. Big round coin coming out. It's fat. This is different than all those big Victorian pennies. It's got a dude on it. 1700s, 1799. I just squeaked under the old 1800 mark. 1799. Guess who's going to be upset? Old King George himself. That's right, KG. I found his coin. Hey, KG, how you doing? Oh, I'm finding a couple things, but not much. Oh, yeah, I just found a coin from 1799 with you on it. In fact, it's you right there. Oh, well, thank you for digging me up. It was very dark and cold down there. KG in the pox. <laughs> England is so full of history, it's hard to wrap your mind around it all. If you look at a timeline, it makes you realize that anything happening after the Middle Ages was basically just an eye blink ago. You've got stuff happening here from modern day rock and roll all the way back to prehistoric times. And then there's Stonehenge. The familiar ring of bluestones dates back to around 3000 BC. But what most people don't realize is that there was a ton of activity including ceremonies and less permanent wooden constructs at Stonehenge date back to around 8,000 BC. What were these people doing at Stonehenge 10,000 years ago? Archaeologists have many theories, but I lean toward the one put forth by the great English thinker Nigel Tufnell. No one knows who they were or what they were doing. I'm wandering across this field. It's pretty quiet, but all of a sudden my detector explodes with a super good signal. No doubt I'm digging this one. <laughs> hey, come here, just listen to this. I mean, this field is pretty much empty, you know? There's yeah. not a lot in here. I'm walking along, just listen to that. That's like an 82, and that could be a freaking silver it Roman coin. That could be a massive silver coin. I, this is crazy. <sighs> Perfect hit right there. All right, let's see what it is. It's probably still in there. Probably a deep Roman fat coin. Here, let me just yeah, see. Pinpoint it again. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it had the perils of Get metal all detecting. excited. Oh, 
Uh, it could be right there. Careful, we don't want to scratch it. Hold on. We move it? It's right there. Ah, ah yeah. that ain't a coin! It's a little piece of copper pipe. Holy, oh, that sounded so good. Yeah, that sounded great. I should know better by now. How long have I done this? Never count your chickens before their birth. And they hatch out and cross the road on their own. Then you can count them after they cross the road. Oh! <laughs> I know what this is. I've seen them before, I've dug them before, and I just came yeah! to eat. Yeah, baby! We've got some cool stuff, but nothing really super old. Silver coins, Victorian and Georgian coins dating back into the 1700s, you gotta love them. But KG and I are here for older stuff, and it looks to me like I just found it. Oh. <laughs> I know what this is. I've seen them before, I've dug them before, and I just came to it. Yeah, baby! <laughs> what is going yeah. on? Roman coin. You got a Roman I coin? I got a Roman coin. What are you screaming about? I just found the most awesome Roman coin probably that's ever been discovered on the land. <laughs> oh. It's a little Roman coin. You can see that little something on there. Some people. <laughs> that's nothing. That's that's like scrap metal compared to the detail that's Let on mine. Let me see it. Look at this. Oh, that is nice. Oh. Ain't that that pointy-headed emperor it coin? It is. I mean, look at this. A Gallienus coin, how great is that? He's sometimes called the pointy-headed emperor because his likeness on the coin showed him wearing a crown with long spikes that looked like horns on his head when the coins were worn down over time. Let's think about this. This thing's been laying in the ground for probably over 2,000 years, just laying here. I mean, you find multiples, you keep looking hard enough, and bam, you get that big hit, or like da 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 I mean, there could be a massive hoard here. I think we found ourselves a little sector, you know, we're helping Gary locate hot spots of Roman and pre-Roman and even Middle Age activity. It's obvious that there was Romans here. I think we nailed it. We definitely zeroed in on a Roman site of some kind. Roman roundness is all over this field. Woo! I got myself a Roman coin! Ha ha ha! It's one of them little tiny ones Ah, oh, it's got great detail. Got the head on one side. Ha! It's got like a headless man on the other side. Because when they stamp, you know, they weren't precise like we are today. I think they just had some guy there probably pounding these coins with the die all day. He probably got tired and he struck this one, mismarked the spot, and decapitated the guy on the coin. This just proves that there was Roman activity right in this exact spot. It hasn't been touched are seen by another human for that long. It's mind-blowing. Oh, it is a coin. It is a coin. <laughs> I'm the man! Yeah, I can't believe it. This, ah, I found Roman coin. I found all kinds of stuff, but this, is by far and away the best one. I'm out of breath, but I know it's not the biggest Roman coin, but man, is this thing beautiful. Looks like it's from the reign of Constance, who was the Roman emperor from 337 to 350 AD. The Latin phrase on the back of the coin roughly means restoration of happy times, and is thought to depict the emperor on a boat sailing across the channel to England in the year 342. These coins were probably minted around 348 to 350 AD. All I know is the happy days are here again for the ringmaster. Definitely my best Roman coin ever. After a great week of hunting and some incredible finds, it's time to find out who the true king of England is. We're gonna have Gary do the honors and pick a winner. Come on, show me. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, he's famous over here for knowing his history yeah. and finding Roman hordes. Exactly. So what better to have as our judge than Gary? Yeah, huh? there, you can't beat it. This is gonna be great. Now, here, we're gonna give you all of them, and then you choose one that you think could be 
whatever you like the best. I mean, they're all pretty cool, pretty fines. All different ages. Penny's nice, but it ain't gonna win it. <laughs> <laughs> the button's cool, but it's not Roman. Yeah. Oh, it's gotta be. Oh, it's it's gotta the winner. Be. Gotta be the Gallianus. Yeah! Gallianus <laughs> wins it! We had an awesome time here in England. You know what? I ordered you something special. It's called black pudding. I'm actually looking forward to this. I mean, we were out in the field for so long. I'm dying, I'm starving. Your pudding has arrived. Thank you. All right. Good, I mean. It's like a salad to me. That's definitely not pudding. I'm a little disappointed, I gotta say. <laughs> what did, did you do something to this? Something I didn't to touch it, I mean, they prepare. You saw the waiter bring it out. But you wanna know what's in it? Pig blood. What a great week. KG and I both found Roman coins and tons of other cool stuff. Even though I lost and had to deal with that black pudding, it feels appropriate that King George was victorious in England. I know we'll be back at some point, so maybe I'll be able to regroup and dethrone him on this turf eventually. Join us next time for more action and adventure on Digging with KG and Ringy. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.